Boom, bam, bop, bada bop, boom, pow. What's up guys, Alec Mac 111 and you remember when I told you guys last video that spring and summer was going to go crazy? Well, I did not lie. I'm surrounded by like 20 packages right now with tons and tons and tons of stuff. So if you're excited for the summer, comment below like summer 21. Give me a sweet emoji. This is definitely gonna have to be more than one video. I literally could not fit this into a single video unless I wanted it to be an hour. All right, first item in today's video is going to be an absolute banger. You guys have actually not seen these on my channel for a little bit. It has been a while since I saw one for sale, to be honest. I have one still rocking on the back of my Cry JPC, but I sold a few of the other ones. It is a GMR mini map. They have not released any of these in a long time, which kind of sucks. I absolutely love them. And I know a lot of you guys do as well. They are expensive but they're so, 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 so nice. So this one is in an AOR1 pattern. I think I've had one AOR1 before. I know I've had two AOR2s at some point in the past, um, but this one actually came, I saw this, this one came with the patch, which some of these patches are going for like 80 bucks, which is insane. I don't know if people actually buy them for that, but I saw one listed on Hop Up. That's crazy. Um, I ended up getting rid of my, when I sold my mini baps, I ended up giving the patch with it because the guy really wanted it and I didn't realize they were that insanely hype to be honest. Um, but it does look like this one is in awesome condition. This is the one if you want to run it as a backpack. That's what my brother does with his. He kind of puts this bad boy on there and then they have like a three sling harness system. I was going to actually try and carry my Mac in this. I have a 13 inch Mac but it's just a tad too big for the backpack um, and so I'll probably just keep this one. Maybe if I build another camo of some sort, this one does come with the medic bag as well. And it looks like it's in really good shape. He's not even put any of the parts on for the straps here. So I don't know if he just didn't use it or if he just decided he didn't really need the compression straps. I wonder if he included like the cards and stuff. No, so here's there. They included like cards and Laffy Taffy in their stuff, which is pretty cool, which is really awesome. I do still have a double mag pouch for this little secret compartment right here. Compartment right here. Um, so I do still have one of the doubles. It's like a Kydex insert that I use on mine. I still absolutely love it. Next up, we have something that Olight actually sent me. I've used their flashlights for a long time. They make great airsoft flashlights for those of you that do not know what they are. Um, and this is the Olight Valor Mini. I'm actually going to be doing a review on this for them sometime in the future, but I just want to show it real quick. Look at how tiny that is. It is insanely tiny. It looks super, super small on my full frame Glock. I actually might try and throw this on my 365 XL and see if it fits there. I have not tried it yet but based on the size, it makes me think that it kind of would. All right, Polar Star or accessories or double accessories and then Polar Star. I think we're gonna go accessories, Polar Star, accessories. <laughs> Good thing we have my trusty knife for this because there is a lot of tape on this box. Oops, I totally cut through the box instead of the actual thing. I believe in here, I have four of these boxes that are all the same from China. So I'm doing two of these in this video and then two of them in next week's video. So I believe these are the accessories. I got like a bunch of replica red dots as well as some really really nice backpacks so oh so i actually have a few different products i'm going to show you guys a little bit of each one um so up first is actually some replica like laser light combo peck boxes and they looked awesome online and they feel really good in person i like these a lot this is like a d-ball i believe is what this is considered i don't know if there are different model numbers for them it says d-ball a2 green so i believe this one has a flashlight as well as like a green laser on it you can tell by that i also got some red ones as well um, and then i also got some repro surefire scout lights so these bad boys are actually individually packaged i got obviously in tan and black i got mostly black because you guys seem to like the blacks a lot but these look really, really cool. Looks like it has the button pressure switch as well as like the pressure switch you wanna run on your gun. I'm really, really impressed with these. Let's check one out. Obviously you can tell some how many times how they look, but it is way more important to pull one out and mess with it in person. All right, now that we have it out of the packaging, man, this thing looks absolutely awesome. I really like the construction. It feels really high quality. So we got the button here. So if you wanna use that, but most of you guys are probably gonna use the pressure switch. This is one that you're supposed to mount to like the side of your gun. When I, whether my, it's my real seal or whether it's my airsoft stuff, I always mount my stuff to the right side of my gun. So I have it sitting on here. So if I'm aiming down, it's not really interfering with anything here in case I have to do some like quick shots or something. And then I usually Usually use zip ties to kind of wire and route these but I believe there's also some really cool alternatives to kind of like the pressure switch systems if you want to run them into like rubber pads I forget what brand makes those last but certainly not least in this box is one that's actually sort of looks like a little bit bigger oh we got four things to pull off instead of just two and this one's just a basic style peck box so this is one of like the basics it's funny that that one's bigger this is like the basic style peck box and this one is more of like the d-ball style and shape you guys can kind of tell the difference for those of you that did not know 
this is like a Peck 15 and this is a D-Ball. I don't know 100% the real ones. All I know is that in real life, they are just insanely, insanely expensive. But these are about the best repro ones I could find around. They just feel really, really high quality. They're definitely made well. Those are awesome, but time to get to the Polar Star. Alrighty, your guys' favorite parts in most of my unboxing. So one of the, my friends actually reached out to me. He was like, hey man, I'm looking to sell this Polar Star. His name is Alec2, which is kind of hilarious. I've not met very many Alex, but he reached out to me on Instagram. He was like, hey dude, I'm interested in selling this Polar Star. Would you be interested in buying it? And he gave me a price and it was pretty reasonable. And so I bought his Polar Star collection. So he did say that this one's a little bit older, but it should be in decent condition. He said he did play with it and use it quite a bit, but let us find out. All right, I got everything out. Let me put it together real quick. All right, now that this thing is together, you guys can see how absolutely beautiful this thing is. It is definitely used. It definitely looks like it has been something that he has loved well. He's done some sort of little spray paint job on it. It started out as a VFC VR16. I'm not sure exactly which mod this one is, but he did replace it, ended up putting a Mark 18 rail on it. I don't think this one came stock with the Mark 18 rail. I think this is something that he added afterwards. And you can see he's done a pretty cool little spray paint job on it. I'm not a huge fan of spray paint jobs. I think they definitely help you blend in better, but sometimes if you don't do them well, they can kind of gum up mechanisms and stuff. But this one feels like it's pretty good. Doesn't really feel like it's affecting the selector switch or the trigger or the mag release or any of that. Starting up front with the gun, he's got a pretty nice little flash hider on here. This is one of those like AAC style flash hiders he's got a medium sized i think this is the full size tango down vertical floor of the kac style but he's just missing the part here looks like he has instead screwed it in here instead of having any sort of tightening system in this one um, he's got a t1 up top also did the same thing with the spray paint this one looks like it has been through vietnam and back does have 416 style sights on here which is really interesting i've not seen a mark 18 ever run 416 style sights um, but they do make nice iron sights and the vfc ones of these are really nice so more power to him. Looks like he's running a little Tamiya system out here. This is a little bit weird. Does kind of look like this wire is a little bit frayed, so I might have to rewire that to Dean's. And I don't think this is the stock stock if I had to guess. I'm guessing, yeah, it looks like he's run some sort of tape on here. Oh no, this is the battery. So the battery is the one that has a little bit of fray. So maybe I'll just tape that with some electrical tape and then he's got the FCU in here as well. What? You do not see this very often. He's running a full-size battery to the FCU, and this is a Polar Star Fusion engine. If you not could not tell earlier, I don't know if I showed you guys, but this is a Fusion engine that's running the gun inside. Looks like it is a stock VFC rotary style hop-up, but he's actually running a FCU with a Tamiya connector. I don't think I've ever seen, I've seen these get wired with JSC, but I don't think I've ever seen a FCU board itself that has a Tamiya connector. I know FCU boards are hard to find, and it looks like this wire harness has definitely been through the ringer, man. Hopefully it still works. I will test it like I do with all the guns after my videos anyway. The engine itself inside looked really nice. It does look like it's been used, but Fusion engines, man, you can get millions of rounds through those things. They are, I mean, you don't have a whole lot of parts moving back and forth, as long as you keep dirt out of your line so you don't get them up through here and stuck in the solenoids because you do have to replace those. I did that like twice in high school. I had to have Fallen Warriors end up replacing those, uh, which was my local field. And they were like a Polar Star Tech at the time. But this is definitely an interesting setup. If she shoots well, that's all that matters. He did include a tank in line in the setup, but doesn't look like he included a regulator. I don't know if he forgot it or if it's somewhere else. But he does have a Valken. This is just a standard 48 3000 metal tank. I think this one does need rehydroed. Oh no, it's 2020. So the tank's actually really fresh. I just don't know why he didn't include a regulator, but there is the line. And then speaking of those Surefire style scout lights, it looks like he's got one here. This one is definitely a lower quality replica one. I think this is the same dimensions as that other one. It looks like it runs off the same thing. Those two CR123A batteries and then he's got some sort of mount here i believe this is the mount for it but not sure completely missed this he did include the regulator uh, i don't know how i missed this because it was definitely buried under something but he did include the regulator it is just a basic standard amped regulator that's what i thought he was including and then it's got the amped braided line does look like he's lost the screw top piece for this but it still works in theory if you kind of just screw this down in as long as the tank is tapped you can definitely tell that he loved this gun well all right here we go into accessory box number two of the video here we have some holographic re uh oh it fell out here we have some of the holographic repros i've actually kind of not had a whole lot of the eotech repros before but i saw these and man they feel so good so this one is in one of the dark earths i believe i got dark earth and black but i got a few different models 
So this is like the 552 variant, I believe. Yeah, it looks like a 552. It's actually some sort of rubberized texture here, which is really cool. The rubberized texture is something I have not felt before on some of the other ones, but this thing is very nice. Here is a black one of the exact same 552 style. Looks really, really good. And last but certainly not least, we have black of the 553. So I believe this is like the little bit shorter one and a little bit thicker one, but it runs off of a different style of battery. Actually, no, it looks like this one runs off two triple A's. Yeah, these ones run off of two triple A's, whereas the 552s run off two double A's, and this one has a different little locking mechanism. I don't know how you guys feel about this locking mechanism. I think it's okay. Sometimes they do get a little bit stuck, but I do like the little bit more kind of compact optic. I think the 552s are awesome, but sometimes they're just a little bit long. But these bad boys are beautiful. Thanks for watching this video, guys. This has been Alec Mac 111 Tune in next week for the second half of the boxes. There are like five other boxes here, and I actually have something really, really cool for from LA Kappa Customs. I got a custom Alec Mac 101 High Kappa that I'm either gonna release with that unboxing or maybe wait and release with the other unboxing. But I appreciate you guys. If you guys got all the way to the end of this video, comment and squad like last time. I'm going to respond to every single one of you guys that does that because I really appreciate you guys sticking all the way to the end and watching these fun outros with me. And I love you. So, bars. This has been Alec Mac 101. I'll see you guys later. <laughs>